Hi, I'm Dweezil Zappa, and today we're going to talk about unusual phrasing. This is something that I'm familiar with because my dad was probably the most unusual guitar player that I can think of in terms of taking techniques and just twisting them around and, and using different sounds. And rhythmically, the ideas were, were pretty complex. So we'll talk about a couple of things that that you can instantly apply, and then we'll get deeper into some of the things that might take a little bit of mind bending before you can get there, because it's still the same issue for me. My mind is always bending, trying to see if I can get a sound that's in my head. But one of the things that is really helpful straight away to think about for unusual phrasing, something that gives you an advantage if you, if you know that this is an option. So like, let's say you are gonna play these notes and you wanna repeat them. Now that sounds pretty normal and that is pretty, you know, probably middle of the road pedestrian kind of sound, you know. Right? But if you want to take those same notes and address them on the neck differently so that you have a different pick attack, it will actually take that same idea and make it much more interesting sounding. So let's look at this as three notes on one string and then three notes on three strings or one note on three strings. That sounds more interesting because of the texture of the pick and, and the, the, the dynamic changes than that just is, that's too uniform. So that kind of thing added anywhere, like a triplet from nowhere. It's the texture of the dynamic change. It's a very different sound, same notes. So that kind of stuff is things that my dad did naturally because he's obviously a little different. But the, the thing that he did too was that he would pick really close to the neck and he had this real plucky kind of sound. So he would actually try to accent the, the, the change in dynamics and texture of, of the pick. So those are all really cool phrasing things that you can try to apply, this is sort of triplet from nowhere thing. But then one of the other things that is sort of the mind-bending part of this, and it's, uh, it's a sound that as guitar players, a lot of us, we hear slide players that are great, that make the sound seem more vocal. There's a vocal quality to the way they maneuver through the, the melodies that they play. And the slide allows for this, this momentum to get into the intended pitch. So if you don't have a slide and you're trying to get some of those sounds, you have to be able to think about coming from beneath the note and getting to the target note. And that is a simple concept to think about, but in practice, it's weird on the guitar because sliding on a guitar that has frets, it sounds too chromatic. So you start bending from the note beneath the note and you can get certain sounds, you know, that are pretty cool. On this guitar, I have a Sustainiac, so I'm able to move things around and have the... I'm able to have the note continue. And you see, I'm having to slide to the notes. But if I wanted to go from directly underneath the note, if this is my target note and I want to go... That kind of slide sound is a weird kind of bend that you have to get used to. And there's a certain thing about playing in that style too, where like, it's not about necessarily perfect intonation because some of the microtonal things are the indicators of the authentic blues sound. 
So like to have a note, like if you're playing, that's too pedestrian. You want to have a little bit. Get near the bridge, get a different sound. All these kind of little bendy things that make it sound like it's drunk. That's what you want to do. That's, that's really the, the mind bending part is like make your guitar sound like it's drunk. And the next level to this is to add the sort of Eastern kind of sound to some of these things. So let's say we're, you know, I'll just give myself an A as a drone in the background. <laughs> some sliding things and some rhythms with the slide too like so you can have all these kind of sliding things but I like to do stuff like this too kind of sounds you know I go for on the guitar but I was like you know I'd really like to hear that on a guitar that sounded more like a slide so what did I do well I did this <laughs> I took a guitar that already was like the one I was just playing and I had the frets removed for the top three strings so I'm still getting used to this guitar but you see it's fretless here but it has frets here. So I'm able to play chords and things in tune very easily on the low strings, but I'm still working on trying to get the intonation and everything working for the, the fretless strings. But here's just an example of the way this sounds. See, in this, you can actually get some weird little sounds where you pull off this fret onto the fretless part. because it's not real slippery right now, but. And then. But this kind of sound. I like that kind of, you know, weird. looking for ways to get closer to that slide sound but play in a way that can also just be standard so with an instrument like this it takes some getting used to because you have to have a sound that that really helps you because uh, this the sustain part on the fretless side is definitely you have to use more pressure on this particular instrument. So that makes it a little harder to slide. So I'm still working it out. But ultimately, the goal is to be able to turn it into an instrument that I can express some of those Eastern sounds with a slide kind of thing and, and just mix and match into some bluesy kind of elements.
So ultimately, it's a, it's a cool instrument to start getting more new ideas, and I'm going to do whatever I can to improve it so I can use it more.